Welcome to the third lab in the Mole Quantities series. This time we are going to work out the mass of carbon in a particular sample of baking soda, which is right here, sodium hydrogen carbonate. We're going to do that by reacting it with a hydrochloric acid solution. We could use vinegar to do this as well, but to be frank, if we use vinegar, it stinks up my classroom. So we'll use hydrochloric acid. It works pretty well, and it has no negative smells associated with it. And when the baking soda reacts with the hydrochloric acid, we'll get carbon dioxide produced as a byproduct. Uh, we will measure the mass of our reactants, and then measure the mass of our products, and the difference in those two masses should be the carbon dioxide that has bubbled away. That means it's very important to have extremely accurate measurement of our masses since we're dealing with relatively small quantities. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my balance, right now, everything is set to zero. I'm going to make sure that when it's set to zero, we actually get a reading of zero. And it turns out we don't. In this case, we need to do an adjustment. And on this particular triple beam balance, the adjustment is made by turning this knob, and that will adjust the zero point. I've made the adjustments on the knob, and you can see now when zero grams are on the balance, the indicator reads that it is exactly at zero. Now we're ready to measure the reactants that we're going to put into this chemical reaction. I'm going to be doing this reaction in an Erlenmeyer flask, so the first thing I need to know is what is the mass of my Erlenmeyer flask? You can see that there is a little bit of water still inside the flask. That's because I've just washed it. And that's okay, because water is part of our reaction, and as long as we leave it there, it's not going to make any problems in our results. Remember, on the triple beam balance, the first thing we do is we move the largest of the masses until it's too heavy, and then we move it back one slot. Then we take the next one, and we move that one until it's too heavy and we move it back one slot. And then, this is not a triple beam balance, we have a dial here that allows us to turn this without having to actually touch the beam that has the balancing masses on it. And we can do a lot better because it doesn't keep bouncing up and down every time we touch it. So we're gonna come over here and watch as I adjust this until we make sure that it exactly matches. That looks pretty good. So we come back, and remember we read from largest to smallest. So our first mass is 100 grams. Our second mass is at the 10. So that's 110 grams. And then we come over here, and you can see that we are beyond the four. So we are at 114, and that looks like right about 114.3. Does it look like it's exactly on? Well, I think we're slightly beyond the zero mark, so I'm going to call that 114.31 grams. Here's one of the most important things that introductory chemistry students forget to do, and that is to specifically write down the exact measurement that you take every time you take a measurement. Now it's time to add baking soda to my flask. If you've looked at the instructions that go with this lab, it says to use 10 grams of baking soda. In this case, in order to make the reaction happen a little more quickly, I'm only going to use five grams of baking soda. So I know I need five grams of baking soda. The first thing I'm going to do, since my empty flask is 114.31, I'm going to adjust my balance to 
119.31 grams. And then I am going to add baking soda until the balance gets back to level. Now, it's possible that I could add a little bit extra by accident. That's okay, because it doesn't have to be exactly five grams. I just need to know exactly how much baking soda I have so that I have a very precise and accurate starting point for my calculations. The reason we're doing approximately five grams is because of the amount of acid and because of the size of the flask in which we're doing the reaction. I've gone slightly over five grams with my baking soda, so we need to check and see exactly what mass we currently have. That looks like about 119.43 to me, so that's how I'm going to record it. Here I've recorded the mass of the flask with the baking soda in it at 119.43 grams. And if I subtract the mass of the empty flask from that number, I come up with 5.12 grams of baking soda with which I'm going to start my reaction. Next I need 75 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to react with the baking soda. And I've started by measuring the empty beaker into which I'm going to pour it. And that is 114.35 grams. Since I don't have a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder available, I'm going to use my 50 milliliter graduated cylinder and measure the acid in two portions. There's 50 milliliters. Make sure that you are correctly reading the meniscus and that you're looking at the very bottom so that you can accurately measure your liquids. Now I have to find out what is the mass with everything together. Note that I put this back to zero and start again as though I were measuring something new. So I have my masses, now it's time for me to actually do the reaction. Notice that when I put the baking soda in, a little bit of it got stuck to the side of the flask here. So when I pour in the acid, which I'm going to do very slowly to make sure nothing bubbles over and spills, I'm going to make sure to rinse down the sides of the container so that anything that might have been left on the side gets caught up and goes through the complete reaction. And now we'll want to swirl this around and make sure that everything finishes and there are no more bubbles coming out. When the bubbles finally stop coming out, the reaction is complete and all of the baking soda will have reacted with hydrochloric acid and will be left with just sodium chloride and water in our solution. Any excess hydrochloric acid, because we've used more than we needed to to make sure all of the baking soda reacted, and all of the carbon dioxide that was contained in the baking soda should have bubbled away. Sometimes this can take four or five minutes, depending on the strength of the acid you're using. With ours, it should only take about a minute or two. I'm 
satisfied that the bubbles are finished. Now it's time that we started our measurements. My reaction is complete. Here is the flask with only the products contained in it, which is sodium chloride, water, and any excess hydrochloric acid solution that wasn't used up reacting with the baking soda. All of the carbon dioxide is gone, so our total mass of the product should be lower than our total mass of the reactants. If we look at the balance, we now have 190 grams here, and zooming in on this, we can see that it's 194.82 grams. Now let's go through the entirety of the calculations. First, we'll review where we are so far. We measured the mass of the empty flask, 114.31 grams. We added sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda and had a total mass of 119.43 grams. Taking the difference between those two masses gave us 5.12 grams of baking soda as one of our reactants. We then measured the empty beaker at 113.45 grams. We added approximately 75 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to the beaker and found the total mass to be 191.42 grams. Taking the difference between those two numbers gave us 77.9 grams of hydrochloric acid. Those were our two reactants. If we take the sum of those two numbers, 77.97 plus 5.12, we have 83.09 grams total of reactants. The number we just measured, the flask with only the products of the reaction in it, is 194.82 grams. Since we're only concerned about the mass of the products themselves, we subtract the 114.31 grams that the flask represents, and it tells us that we had 80.51 grams of products. Moving along to the next step, 83.09 grams of reactants total. We subtract 80.51 grams of the products that we just measured, and that shows us we have 2.58 grams is the difference in mass. Well, the difference in mass must be the difference in what's inside, and we know what's no longer inside is carbon dioxide. So knowing that 2.58 grams of carbon dioxide has escaped is going to allow us to figure out exactly how much carbon was in our original sample of baking soda. Before we can jump directly to that calculation though, we first need to know the percent composition of carbon dioxide. And since we're just concerned about carbon, that's the only one we're going to look at. So what I've done here first is added up the molar mass of carbon dioxide, the mass of one oxygen, I'm sorry, the mass of two oxygens and one carbon, gives us 44.009 grams per mole. We find the percent composition of carbon by taking the mass of carbon, which is 12.011 grams, and dividing it by the total mass, 44.09, to give the decimal 0.27292, Remember, to get a percentage, we multiply by 100. Therefore, that is 27.29% carbon. Using that number, as a decimal, 0.2729, that's the percentage, and we multiply it by our total mass, 2.58 grams of carbon dioxide, that tells us that we have 0.704 grams of carbon. And that's because 0.2729 times 2.58 is telling us what is 27.29% of the 2.58 gram carbon dioxide sample that we're talking about. 